What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. FPL Harry here. We are just three days away from the start of the Premier League season from FPL being back. Today I'm going to take you through my latest draft. I really think this could be it for game week one. What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video, FPL Harry. Today I'm taking you through my latest draft. We are finally getting to the point where I'm starting to lock in players and lock in my team for game week one for the start of the season. Today I'm going to take you through my latest draft, how I think I'm going to line up, where I'm currently at and a few of the very final decisions I need to make for my team to be ready for the start of the season. Before we dive into it, if you're enjoying it, make sure to smash that subscribe button. 25k subscribers is the goal for game week one. Can we get there? Help me out a little bit. But we start in goal and I've had to downgrade a little bit to go with David Raya in goal. So I would go up, but as you can see, I have no money in the bank. So I have had to go with David Raya. My favorite 4.5 at the moment, for me, it's between him and Meslier. The opening couple of fixtures are a little bit more difficult for Brentford. They play Leicester and Manchester United, but after that, it looks really good. The signing of Ben Mee as well means I think they'll have another good season defensively. My only concern with them is they have played a back four in preseason, which I think is slightly worse defensively compared to when they played a back five at points in last season. They do also have a new goalkeeper who has played a few minutes in preseason, but I do think Raya is still first choice. Now, the backup for 4.0 is Danny Ward at Leicester. It looks like Schmeichel is going to leave and we've heard from press conference quotes today that it sounds like it's going to be a 50-50 call whether Ward or Iverson starts and is their number one goalkeeper this season if Schmeichel does leave. Now he's not necessarily going to be fit for game week one because he hasn't had very much pre-season but even that being the case I think he's definitely the 4.0 goalkeeper to go with now. I'm not going to change him because even if he comes into the team two or three weeks in he's still going to be that 4.0 goalkeeper like we had with Ben Foster last year that you can rotate in and out of your starting 11. So that is the the goalkeeper pairing we've got it is only 8.5 million the cheapest combination that you've got but I'm very happy with the keepers that I've got Moving into defence, we start off, of course, we've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, 7.5 million. Of course, very happy with him. Again, that Liverpool run of opening fixtures. He scored in the Community Shield as well. He is the most expensive defender, but I expect him to be the most highly scoring defender as well. There's no chance he leaves my team. With him, we've also gone with Andrew Robertson. So that Liverpool defensive double-up is back in my team. That Community Shield did nothing good for Diaz, in my opinion. It did such good things, for my opinion, of Robertson as an FPL pick. They basically played... The the same position they had the same sort of attacking threat Robertson is more nailed than Diaz is Robertson also is a million cheaper plus he gets clean sheet points after watching that game I think it's a no-brainer to go with Robertson in your game week one team over Diaz again there might be a little bit of team structure thing like I could downgrade him to go with someone else and free up some money to go with Diaz in my midfield but at the moment Robertson is the one that I'm going with now elsewhere in my defense we have lost Reese James Reese James has left my team no Chelsea defense here and we've gone with Kieran Trippier as my 5 million option. Again, those Newcastle fixtures are very nice to open the season. Three of the first four are amazing and then they get good fixtures as well after their game in game week five against Liverpool. Again, I can rotate him in and out of my squad, but what he can do in those good fixtures, he is great. He's on set pieces, his threat from open play, plus Newcastle were one of the best defensive last season. They finished third in the Premier League from the turn of the year when they started to build that new system, to build that momentum. And I even expect them to get better with the signing of Botman and the other midfielders that they've brought in as well. So I really like Trippier and finally my final starting defender is Cancelo again I want Manchester City defensive colour for me Cancelo is the most nailed a few of you looking at Walker I like him but only as an addition to what you're going to get with Cancelo you could go Diaz as well but for me again these are additions on what you're going to have with Cancelo those bonus points goals assist that you're going to get with Cancelo I expect him to step up his attacking returns even further this year and the final defender we've got is Patterson of Everton and this is a change I've gone from Nico Williams of Nottingham Forest to Patterson Patterson looks like he's playing right wing back in the back five for Everton and the big reason I've gone with him over Nico Williams is his fixtures in game week three and game week five now you might not have necessarily looked at your team this far ahead but those are the two weeks where there are other difficult fixtures game week three in particular you have Wolves playing against Tottenham you have Liverpool playing against Manchester United you have Newcastle playing against Manchester City so the likes of Trippier the likes of Neto you're not going to be wanting starting that week but Patterson that week plays Nottingham Forest at home whereas Necker Williams of course goes away to Everton and for me Patterson is a better pick for that week and also plays Leeds away in game week five as well so for me he's a better substitute in the weeks that I feel like I'm going to need him in my starting 11. He's also got two assists in his two starts during preseason as well. So I've gone with him 
over newly promoted Nottingham Forest player Neko Williams. Into midfield, we start with Mohamed Salah. Again, there's no reason for me to take him out. He was one of my essential players in my essential players video. If you haven't watched that already, click the link above and you can go and check that out. 30 million, my captain for most of the opening game weeks as well. He looked so good in that community shield. No chance I go without him. Get him in your game week one teams as well. Now, next to him, we have got Martinelli. Now, Martinelli versus Saka is a difficult one, but the reason I've gone with these guys is if you're just owning Jesus for game week one and they score lots of goals as they are very capable of doing and as they did in their most recent preseason game you basically get nothing because Jesus has passed 70% ownership for the start of the season so I've gone with Martinelli he's on set pieces he might be on penalties as well we don't quite know who's on penalties now Saka took the one in the most recent game but that's because he won it and in the end of last season Martinelli took one because he won it and it might be whoever wins the penalty takes one which is absolutely fine for me six million Martinelli feels like an absolute bargain now next to him we have a new signing we've gone with Mason Mount now this could be any eight million midfielder and this is one of the decisions I've still got to make but Mount had a really good preseason the opening games for Chelsea I've banged on about are very good from an attacking point of view but not necessarily so good from a defensive point of view away at Everton Tottenham and then they have leads away in game week three followed by Leicester four games I think there's goals to be scored but not necessarily clean sheets to be made which is why I've made the switch of going for example Robertson in for Reese James and then going Mount in for Diaz which is a big switch that I could make so I've gone with Mount here but it could be Kulusevski it could even be Diaz come game week one and the final starting midfielder that we've got is Neto. It is a bit of a 50-50 call for me between Neto and Leon Bailey at the moment. 5 million Bailey is also a fantastic pick, but I have gone with Neto here. He left and then he came back into this most recent draft. Again, those opening fixtures are very good and he has a more long-term opening fixture run that I really like, whereas Bailey only has a good fixture in game week one, two and three. And after that, it does get a lot more difficult and that would be a transfer I'd have to book in and I don't want to do that. And Neto is in here again because he's the talisman, the main goal threat in that Wolves team, especially now that Jimenez is injured. And finally, we have Andres Pereira of Fulham. Again, the best 4.5 midfield option, playing number 10, playing in behind Mitrovic on some set pieces as well. Again, a great fixture in game week three and game week five where you could rotate him into your starting 11 if you needed to for some of those more difficult fixtures. I really like him. If you're not playing a five-man midfield, I expect you'll be having him in your team as well. And finally, we move up front before we look at the actual starting 11. Again, if you're enjoying, subscribe to the channel, like the video as well. It's much appreciated. We've gone with Jesus, we've gone with Haaland, and then we've gone with Archer. Archer has today announced that he's not leaving Aston Villa and Gerard is going to put him in the squad. He's going to get minutes for Aston Villa as well, even if it's off the bench. So that's fine. I've gone with him over Greenwood because he's less lowly owned and more likely to hold his price of 4.5 million and not drop in price. Jesus, for me, is one of the most essential players in the game. 8 million is a massive underprice of him. Their opening fixtures are incredible. He scored a hat-trick in their most recent preseason game. I have banged on about Jesus in every video I've put out. If you don't have Jesus in your team, let me know why, because he is essential for me. And finally, we've gone with Haaland. Now, he necessarily didn't score in that Community Shield game, but he still impressed me. 1.5 expected goals in that game. And I think given that opening run of fixtures compared to what you get with Son or Kane, for example, I've gone with Haaland. That Bournemouth at home fixture in game week two, if you're going with Kane or Son and you have them a away at Chelsea with Haaland being at home to Bournemouth you're going to have massive FOMO going into that game so I've gone with Haaland as my second option I think they look good against Liverpool although they didn't win and I expect them to hit the ground running this season as well so this is my 15 man squad but in terms of the decisions I've still got to make there are a couple of them there is about a 5% chance that I bring in Harry Kane for Haaland as I just mentioned there I have Bailey versus Neto and then the final real big decision that I've got is do I go with Robertson and Mount or do I go with Reese James and Lewis Diaz. Now that Reese James Lewis Diaz option would free up 1 million, which would allow me to upgrade David Raya potentially to Edison as well. Now that's a pretty 50 50 call. I haven't made my mind up on it at the moment. At the moment, I've gone with Robertson and then Mount because I loved what I saw from Robertson in the Community Shield. But this is my 15 man squad. Let's get into that starting 11. So for game week one, I will be playing a 4-4-2 formation. On the bench, we will have Archer, we will have Pereira, and we will have Patterson along with Ward. There is a chance that I chance it and play Ward at home to Brentford in game week one and bench Riot and see if he starts, but without preseason, I don't think it's going to be the case. 
we do start with a back four, a big back four with some great fixtures here. We've got Trent and Robertson, those two playing away at Fulham. We have Cancelo away at West Ham, and then we have Trippier, a great fixture at home to Nottingham Forest. In midfield, Salah again, like the other Liverpool guys, has got Fulham away. Neto leads away. Then we have Martinelli and Jesus with Crystal Palace away on that opening Friday night. Don't forget that Friday night deadline. And finally, Mason Mount away at Everton with Haaland going away to West Ham. My only concern is the amount of away fixtures that I have in this team. Now, I look at my team for game week two and practically everyone is playing at home. That's just how the fixtures have held. It's not exactly what I'd wanted for the start of the season, but it is the team I like. Let me know what you think of my team. Drop any questions down below and drop your drafts down below as well. And I will do my best to rate as many as possible before the game week one deadline. I'm also doing a rate my team video before the deadline as well. So I'll be posting on Twitter where you can submit your drafts as well. Thank you all for watching. Any questions down below, subscribe to the channel. We are so close to hitting that 25,000 subscriber target from game week one. Thank you all for watching and I'll be back again tomorrow.